Welcome to another one of my CV2 tutorials. Today we're talking all about events. Events are something that are very useful to almost every circuit circuit person on the game. Now, quick thing because before we start, for all you coders, events are pretty much functions that you define on your own in your coding language. But for all of you non-coders, let me explain it this way. Events are things that you tell the game to do, right? Now, this doesn't tell you much. This explanation is rather rather dull and might not say much. But think of it like this. You have a whole circuitry that you want to activate at a certain time. Now, let's say it's only meant for just a prototype or things like that. You will just write, wire up a button, click it, and it activates. That's okay. But let's say you want it automated. You want a certain amount of circuitry to be triggered as soon as a player enters. That's where events come in. And I'm going to show you all of that today. And I'll try and keep it brief and simple for all of you to understand. Now, the people who've been with me from the start of my tutorials might know I have done this before. I have done this tutorial before, such as most of my current tutorials that I've been filming. Now, why is that? The reason is I've ha I've been making all these tutorials when CV2 was in beta. The circuits looked different. There was not as many out as there are currently. And that's why I want to redo them, catch up on the modern days of CV2, and make sure that new people do not get confused with the old designs when comparing them to the new ones. That's why I've been remaking these tutorials, because it, it has been well over a year since I've done tutorials. So yeah, enough blabbering, let's get into it. Okay, so I've spawned in our event circuits and let's talk about them. Now the event circuits do not cover much. There are only three of them. We have the event definition, the event sender, and the event receiver. Now I'm gonna tell you all about all of these, but let's start with the event receiver. The event receiver is a circuit that gets triggered at a certain event certain time, things that you define. Now before we get into custom events slash functions, let's go over the ones that currently exist pre-made in the game. So if you take your maker pen and configure the event receiver, as you can see, we have chip settings. We're going to expand that. Actually, we're going to expand everything. That's about it already. <laughs> so there it is, the event. The event tab is where we define when this event receiver will be triggered. Let's click it. And this is everything that we currently have. Now, it might seem a lot, but it really isn't. So we have AI events. So the event receiver would be triggered when an AI died, when an AI has spawned. Same with consumables. When a consumable has been used, it, this will be triggered. Now, each event is different in their own way. So let me show you. So if I set my current event receiver to, for example, player joined, the event receiver changes. It tells us that the current re event receiver is set to ac activate every time a player joins. We get a signal output, so we can do something after that. And we also have a player pin now, telling us who joined, for example. So we can use this to, for example, ac activate a hello message. So you would join a room and it would say hello, and then your username, and then have a great day, for example. Let's look further. Let's configure it and let's say update 30 hertz. Now the update 30 hertz event is something that gets triggered every 30 hertz, which means that is very, very fast. Every 30 hertz, a signal gets outputted from you. And you can check how fast it is by hovering over the delta time. As you can see, we have one activation every 0 0.03 seconds. That's delta time. Now this would be used, for example, with uh, clocks, but even that would be maybe a bit overkill activating it every 30 hertz. So let's check one more out. Let's configure our event receiver. Let's see what else we got. We got player collision, for example, right? Again, it already tells us what it does. The event receiver will be triggered when two players collide. And there you go, this is all we need. We have it when it'll be activated, we can use the signal, and then we have the two players that have collided. And that is it, right? But enough of the pre-made events. So again, event receiver is meant to only be triggered by an event. 
we will never activate the event receiver manually unless it is a custom one and that's what we're getting in now. For custom events, we have two chips, the event definition and the event sender. Now, as you can see, a good way to memorize this, if you might not be good with connecting things, is the event sender triggers the event receiver. And how do we know that? Because of, you know, you can memorize this by this little uh, Wi-Fi single signal, for example, Wi-Fi wi icon, there you go, Wi-Fi icon, for example, right? So we will send out a wireless connection from our sender to our receiver, right? So when do we even use a sender? We use a sender if we have a custom event. And that's where the event definition comes into place. So today we'll be making a custom event called yes, for example, right? So all you got to do is spawn in your event definition, configure it, and go into the settings. The chip name is our event name. So we're going to call it first event. Hit submit. As you can see, it now changes to first event, and that's also what the game will now recognize it as. Let's go, let's go down. So we have add new property. And that's the next thing I'm going to be talking about after I show you how we can even configure the sender to recognize our first event. All you gotta do is configure your event sender, click your chip settings and click event. And there you go. This is the only custom event that is currently present in the whole room. So we click it and it is now configured. It will now activate the event receiver when, if it, if, it is configured to our first event. So we have to do the same with event receiver. We configured our event receiver. We go through this list and we see first event here. We click it and now all of these are configured. So as soon as the sender will be triggered, the event receiver will send out a signal. Now, do not get confused. This right here is only meant to do something afterwards, right? So as soon as we trigger our original circuit, we are then free to use the signal that passes through, meaning that this is not required. This right here is not required and only this is. So in the input we trigger our sender which will wirelessly trigger our event receiver. This is only if we for example want to print something out after we trigger certain things. That is your personal choice what you want to do after a certain circuitry triggers. So as soon as our event will be triggered we will be greeted by hello. So now if we connect our button to our event sender which will trigger our custom event the event receiver will be triggered and activate our show notification. So watch. There you go. Hello. So, next up is another crucial thing that you have to know about events. If you configure a certain event, right, such as a first event in our case on our event sender, we have target. Now, this is who even gets this event triggered, right? So, if you select all, all players in the room will have their events triggered. But for example, if you use local, that's the only people who will have their event triggered. Now with the only people, I only specifically mean you. If something says local, that only applies to you. Now we also have others, which means everyone apart from you. We have authority and room authority which obviously speaks about your authority in a certain room, such as ranks, uh, ranks, I mean, permissions. So, let's now pass through a certain text through our event, which we will display on our show notification. So how do we do that? If you want to pass certain things through our events, we're going to configure our event definition, go to add property, and then add something that we want to pass through. And in my case, I would like to pass through a string. So we're gonna search for string. It's down here somewhere. String, there you go. And we will name it text. This is the name you will be remembering it by. Hit add property, and as you can see, everything changes. The first event now says that we have something in the event other than a execution. In our case, we have a string called text. The sender now gets a pin. Now, which means we give the sender the value we want to send through our event receiver, right? So what I'm going to do is configure what we give our sender an input. I've been passed through an event. Let 
it done. There you go. We now give it a signal when to execute and the text we want to pass through. And now all we got to do is we're going to connect what we have here to our value. And now as soon as we press our button, I've been passed through an event because we give it, we, we tell it when to activate it and we tell it what to pass through. The value gets passed through to the event receiver. The event receiver then sends it to our show notification. And that's basically how events work. So yeah, that is everything for my current tutorial. You now know what events are, how to use them, and how to configure them. How to execute them for yourself, for others, or for everyone in the room. I hope this was quite useful to you. If it was, let me know in the comments. I would, love, I would love to hear your feedback. I always base my things off feedback, meaning that if there might be people who got confused by it, or people who loved the video, I know that I can keep on making this style of tutorials for people to watch and enjoy and use in their own time. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. It will help me out a lot. It will give me motivation to keep on making my content because I do enjoy it. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say and think about it. So that was it. I hope I'll see you in my next tutorial. And yeah, good luck in your CV2 journey.